American Heartland is home to fertile farms and a racing tradition as rich as the bountiful soil. Whether it's circle track or monster trucks, the fans of motorsports never miss a chance to take in the sights or the sounds. This week, we come to you from DeCoin, Illinois, the DeCoin State Fairgrounds inside the Southern Illinois Center on the Fairgrounds Complex. And uh, this is a great facility, serves as both a convention center and a dirt track. There's even a uh, horse racing track across the fairgrounds. And we'll be bringing you the action from five of the best monster trucks in the country from inside this awesome building tonight. But the first quarter tour for Monsters of Destruction kicked off last month in Madison, Wisconsin, and we had our cameras there as well. It was a snowy, stormy weekend. It was very bitter cold outside, but that did not stop the best fans in motorsports from coming out as the monsters heated up action inside the old Veterans Memorial Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center, and we saw some debuts there, including this one, Stevie Snellen in the brand new Alton Brad. Ruck out of Louisville, Kentucky, getting things started off in qualifying. He would qualify with a 2.92. The truck owner, Derek Anson, back at the wheel of heavy hitter for 2023. He would qualify in the number one spot at a 2.18 second elapsed time. Brad Shippard, guy we're always glad to see back. Leukemia survivor in against the grain from Dixon, Illinois. Shippard with a massive launch, his first concrete raw car show. And he looks awesome, they're flying. A 2.89, not as fast as he would like. He would end up in fourth, right behind this guy, R.J. Turner. The brand new body 20th anniversary War Wizard scheme, and I think it might be the best looking body that truck has had in uh, quite some time, if not the best looking body they've ever had. First round action saw Alcatraz taking on against the grain. Straight line, single jump. Shipper did not see the light. In fact, there were problems with that staging light and it cost him that victory there, although he was not out of the race, as you'll see in just a moment. Derek Hansen and heavy hitter. Another interesting first round matchup. This time the other driver would see the light, but that would be the least of his problems. Keep your eyes on RJ Turner and War Wizard when he gets the green here in just a moment. I don't know if that was an accident or if RJ just wanted out of the racing bracket. You can see he took off in reverse there on the starting line. RJ always making things hard on the uh, people keeping track of the bracket. Semi-final round race, heavy hitter in Alcatraz, teammates battling here in the semi. And heavy hitter would just nose out Alcatraz, Derek Anson knocking out Stevie Snellen to move on to a final round race against, surprise, surprise, look who's back in the left lane, Brad Shippard in against the grain. Much better run for him here, but it would not be enough to knock down Derek Anson, who would take the season opening victory in Madison, Wisconsin for the Monsters of Destruction Tour. Now we're going to take you into a couple of freestyle highlights. Alcatraz, the brand new machine in its first freestyle. This chassis actually used to belong to Jim Burns. This was supposed to be the second mechanical mischief. Burns never put the truck together. He sold the chassis to Derek Hansen, who did some rebuilding on it, and it showed up like this in Madison, Wisconsin, a work of art. Stevie getting the pulse rate up for both himself and Derek Hansen as he put the truck up on two wheels there, coming over the center bandstand. A 
A solid opening freestyle for Snellen to close out night one in Madison, Wisconsin. Night two saw even more snow, blizzard-like conditions, but once again, the fans showed up and so did the monster. Alcatraz laying down a 2.16 second run in qualifying on night two, fastest run so far of the weekend. Heavy hitter at a 2.92, not even close to his first night time, but against the grain was the big surprise. 2.12 for the big green Ford out of Illinois. With the light strips on the side, how would he do in round one a rematch? He's already done this twice, Alcatraz and against the grain. Came out of the hole early, we wondered if he jumped. No sir, he just caught a perfect light. And Brad Shippert would move on into semifinal round racing, as would Alcatraz as Fast Loser taking on RJ Turner in War Wizard. RJ gave it a valiant effort, but got jumped out of the hole, and that would give Stevie Snell in the berth in the championship race, where he would face off one more time with Brad Shippert in against the grain. Snellen looking for a little revenge in this championship battle between two of the toughest guys in the Dairy State. And the big bluegrass bulldog going on to victory, knocking out the Illini, although Shippert gave him quite a run as he's looking better and better each time out. Remember I said this is the first time he's ever performed at an event like this. Now, some more freestyle highlights from here on night two. Derek Hansen, and heavy hitter. He would open things up to the first one to get a shot at the course in freestyle. surface for some awesome donuts. Up next, Brad Shippard. His night in freestyle would be short-lived. Watch what happens here. The rear end would lock up on him right there. That's what caused the truck to hike and then come back down when he got on the throttle. And the damage would actually be not as bad as everyone thought, worse than some expected once they figured out what exactly had gone wrong or where on the truck it actually was. But you can see him rolling the right rear tire off as they're about to start taking that corner apart. There you see uh, Cody Hedman and uh, the rest of the crew getting their hands dirty, ready to pull that right rear planetary assembly off. And now they're gonna look in to the actual internal axle assembly. They're gonna pull the uh, outside tip off of that axle, and there you see it. Yep, there she, oh. Oh yeah, you broke it. <laughs> At that moment, he knew he messed up. <laughs> Not as bad as they thought, but worse than they had hoped as he exploded an axle wow. U-joint. Wow, I did a good number wow, on that. Man, <laughs> Let me tell you, I don't think it's this corner that's broke, guys. <laughs> they worked on it late into the night, but they were kept in uh, very good spirits. He would, in fact, replace that whole uh, right rear axle assembly and get back in the action. Now, wheeling competition. Starting things off on Sunday afternoon. You can see it's light outside, but there is still a lot of snow blowing around, and Stevie Snellen will be the first one to find a gap in the crush cars. Almost putting that truck on its side again, but watch this. Derek Anson almost over on his top, a hard hit, and he was having some back problems this weekend. Next guy to struggle with the gap, Brad Shippard, and the last thing he wanted to do was land hard again on that uh, right rear corner. Now, 
final round race between teammate Shippert was supposed to be there, but he blew a tire in the semifinals. And Stevie Snellen would once again pick up the racing victory. So he would uh, go two of three. Derek Anson, of course, in two of the three final rounds. It was a pretty good weekend for him to be in the finals. And in spite of what you're seeing here, Brad Shippert, who also had a damaged four-length bar, he was able to uh, get a little help from his friends, borrow a couple parts, and get back out for a freestyle. But the freestyle we're going to show you from Sunday afternoon is that new-looking war wizard, awesome-looking machine, R.J. Turner, cut the loose on the concrete floor of the Alliant Energy Center, the Veterans Memorial Coliseum. R.J. always interesting to watch, and I think if he knew it was uh, crushed cars and concrete, he would not run those BKTs. Struggling a little bit with some steering and transmission problems, but it was not stopping him. Little hindrance as you see right there. But that only serves to make RJ drive a little bit angry. motor not what he wanted to hear but he had that thing rocking and rolling the 20th anniversary body for wizard again i think the best looking uh re-debut they've ever had for that machine out of uh, knoxville maryland so that wraps up our highlights from madison right now we are getting ready for action now on the dirt here in decoin illinois and you see the catch fence this is an indoor dirt track things are about to get wild when we come back to illinois this Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Monsters Monthly. Stay up to date with photos, videos, event info, and more at MonstersMonthly.com. And by Crush This. For an inside look at the monster truck phenomenon, check out Crush This, a monster truck podcast. There's only one place in the world you can find this much old school cool. Freedom Racing Monster Trucks. The home of Cyclops and Unnamed and Untamed. Get yourself a limited edition toy at FreedomRacingMT.com. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by RPM Army, the place to get your motorsports fix. Welcome inside the Southern Illinois Center on the DeCoin State Fairgrounds. Awesome facility, one of our favorites of the year. We have not been here since 2020. We're going to open things up with qualifying action right now. Aaron Basil out of Grand Island, Nebraska in the Devastator. Digging into the dirt with the Firestone slipping a little bit. This track usually has a lot of bite to it. We've seen trucks uh, hike up and roll over here in the past. As Devastator you saw laid down in 1861 now. Toxic 2.0 out of Frederick, Maryland. Fifteen fifty one. He blisters the track. Corey Snyder, his first run ever inside this building, and it was a good one. Now a guy who's been here before, R.J. Turner, out of Knoxville, Maryland, and War Wizard. A 
Look at this, a 15-37 for the 2041 Willis. He did not think he would be there, but he was. As our next competitor rolls to the line, Stevie Snellen now taking over the driving duties of heavy hitter. Conservative off the line. He runs a 1664, getting used to this truck again. Uh, Derek Hansen dealing with the health issue. We want to wish him the best of luck. Stevie taking over the driving this week. And now you might be asking who's going to be at the wheel of Alcatraz since Stevie is at the wheel of Heavy Hitter. Well, it'll be none other than the chassis' original owner, Jim Burns, from right here in Illinois, out of Rockford to be exact. Burns, a former driver, owner of uh, Mechanical Mischief. He's since pulled that truck to Josh Baumgartner, and he's going to get his first shot inside a very tall Alcatraz. A 1786 will drop to the... Uh, number four spot right now but that will set up our bracket for the first round you see the toxic 2.0 taking on alcatraz so number two and number four war wizard qualified number one gets the buy into the next round and uh, heavy hitter will of course take on devastator so we'll get ready for those first round pairings right now toxic 2.0 coming to the line out of frederick maryland Corey snyder again very excited to run uh, this tour the first time ever this year. And uh, Lee Collins, got to be one of the easiest promoters for these guys to work with. Doesn't put too much pressure on them. Just put on a good show. If you haven't seen the Monsters of Destruction live, you got to get out and see them. One of the top quality uh, events around. Alcatraz and Toxic 2.0 ready to go in round one. Snyder with the jump. Very quick through the first turn into the final leg. Burns learning a little bit each time he goes around the track and he tries to get used to, again, a very tall truck. They set this thing up to keep the body off the wheels because this is a body that once it touches the ground or once it gets broken, it's done for. Snyder, though, was on rails in that run. As our next pairing comes to the line, there you see Aaron Basil in the Devastator out of the state of Nebraska going toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with another big bad bluegrass bow tie. This is heavy hitter. The C-10 bodied machine out of Louisville, Kentucky being driven by uh, the tallest man, I believe, right now in Monster Truck, Stevie Snellen. This should be a solid matchup. Two very capable drivers and two very capable machines. Even start, a little edge to Devastator. Where is Snellen? Gonna have to go some in this final turn. Basil goes deep, and Snellen will pick up a convincing victory over the Devastator. Stevie Snellen with a big come from behind in that run as heavy hitter will roll on into the semifinal round. We will see who our fast loser is when we get there. You see War Wizard already seated into that round. He just has to make his buy run here in a moment. Toxic 2.0 knocked off Alcatraz in that first matchup. He will take on heavy hitter who won the last matchup and Devastator will go against War Wizard. So uh, War Wizard you see taking on the fast loser from round one. But to make a legal buy run. He's not officially seated into that uh, round just yet. And it looks like he is dealing with steering problems again all over the track at the finish line but the front two tires went up the final ramp so it was a legal run you can see though he's not happy right now as uh, turner will bring the war wizard back into the pit area and park it as he tries to deal with whatever is going on underneath of that machine he's been dealing with steering problems for the uh, last month now they've been trying to figure out what is going on with this truck as uh, andy gets him pulled back into the pits there 
And it looks like he's going to shut it down. They're going to refire him. Something went away on him there. He may be having an electrical problem. Something going wrong with that truck. They're going to have to get that looked at to try to get back into this thing now as we go into Pro Rough Trucks. Got four of them here this weekend. And uh, some real tough customers from uh, the uh, southern Midwest and elsewhere. You're looking out right now at Plum Nuts' Evan Collins. Truck owned by uh, Jason Bono. Uh, we'll see a little bit later in the General Lee machine. This truck they're dealing with some fuel issues on. We'll see how it does here as they were working on it before the show. Little bit of trouble coming off the line right there for Plum Nuts. Get a good look at the course though as he works his way around. It's a long one. Around the tough blocks, double back over the monster truck, jumps the opposite direction that the monster trucks ran. Then around the other race lane. Go around the tough block again here and come back up the way the monster trucks ran the track earlier. Although he's going to go around the obstacle, he's supposed to go over that obstacle to see if that costs him any time. And across the finish line, you can hear he was still having some problems. I believe the fuel system is the issue here this weekend. He runs a 48.56, and there is a penalty on that run, I do believe, because I think he was just a little bit faster than that. We still have three guys left to go. They're going to take that truck back and see if they can figure out exactly what is going wrong with that machine. But you can hear it popping and cracking just a little bit. Here comes Jason Bono right now in the General Lee machine. Beautiful bright orange Ford Bullnose pickup and this guy is quick. One of the quickest in the Midwest tough truck scene. Out of Pierce City, Missouri. Let's see what he has here for the Illini crowd. Coming out hard and it is tough to start in that whoop section. Working the track very, very quickly. That was that tough left turn that we saw Collins miss. Now on to the final corner and over the finish line. As we wait on the time, Bono looking good in that run. 39.05 for Bono as the uh, next machine comes out. It'll be Cody Coulter in Stryker out of Jefferson City, Missouri. I believe that is a stripped down Ford Explorer or a Ford Ranger. I believe it's a Ford Explorer. Or at least it's a Bronco with a, with an Explorer grill on it. A little bit shorter wheelbase here. This guy should be super fast on this tight course. Going after a 3905. Very smooth through that whoop section. See how he handles the first leg. Very, very smooth. A little bobble right there. I think he started to turn inside. Now he's got to make the hard left up on top of the race lane. He is moving quick. He's in the hunt right now. I do believe he did. Yes, he did. 36-64 for Cody Coulter and Stryker. As our final vehicle gets ready to come out, it's one of the most interesting vehicles, I think, in this uh, battle here this weekend. Slightly mozzified Mike Mozzie out of Brasito, Missouri. Little Chevy love truck. Interesting, Bill Ray. You see he's got the... Uh, Independent front suspension stood up real high. This thing lands very nicely. The dual uh, tractor tires on the back give it some extra bite. And uh, I'll tell you what, this soil already has a lot of bite to it. He may want those tires to break loose. We'll see if this works for him, though. 
Rear end was rough, but the front end stayed on the ground, did its job. Trying to get up onto that obstacle without pushing the front end too hard. He's looking good right now, trying to sling that rear end around. Going after a 36-64, not gonna do it. 39-75, so he will drop into third place. Here you see the uh, times after the first round. Cody Coulter leading with a 36-64. Then it's Jason Bono, owner of two trucks in this fleet of 39.05, Mike Mozzi. So you just saw that 39.75 and a 48.56 for Evan Collins. Well, don't go anywhere. We're just getting things underway. The semifinal round of Monster Truck Racing and more with the Rough Trucks. We come back to Des Moines, Illinois. laying down the lines, getting ready for the semi-final round of Monster Truck Racing here inside the Southern Illinois Center in Des Moines. We showed you the pairings before we went to a rough truck competition. In the last segment now, as Heavy Hitter gets ready to come to the line, our two winners from round one, two very low-slung machines. Heavy Hitter, the Chevy C10 against Toxic 2.0, 2015 Ford Super Duty out of Frederick, Maryland. This should be an awesome battle here in this semifinal round. Two pretty evenly matched trucks. A lot of horsepower. Keep the weight down low, and especially on dirt that bites this hard, you have a tendency to want to hike up in the corners. These guys have a lot less to worry about with these trucks, these low CG chassis. Maybe a little edge to Snellen. Snyder. Gonna have to push him in this final corner. Snellen with a little lead. But Snyder pours it on and comes back. Another come from behind victory, and he did to Stevie Snellen, which Snellen did to Aaron Basil in round number one. And speaking of Aaron Basil, he will be in our next pairing as uh, he gets ready to come out and head to the starting line to take on R.J. Turner in War Wizard, the Nebraska Chevrolet, formerly of uh, Mark Schrader, man out of the state of Wisconsin, now calls, uh, I believe, Arizona home. Here you see R.J. Turner in the Maryland-based War Wizard. Truck owned by a gentleman out of the uh, country of Canada. Handled by this team out of the Old Line State now battling with the Chevy from Nebraska. And a jump for Basil. Making quick work of this track. RJ Turner trying to come back on him. Not going to do it, and I don't think it was a legal launch over the last jump anyway, but he tried to make a race of it. Turner. Coming on strong in that uh, last leg there, but I think the steering problems may have been catching up with him again. Solid run though, in spite of the issues they've been having with that truck. 
take nothing away from him. He was there at the end, but it will be Aaron Basil in Devastator moving on into the championship race to take on Toxic 2.0, and Basil will have to come right back to the line to take on Corey Snyder as the uh, fans are in for a ton of action anytime they come out to one of these Monsters of Destruction events. Let's take uh, another look at the uh, catch fence structure that runs the entire perimeter of, uh, again, what is an indoor dirt track during much of the year and a uh, perfect facility for these monster trucks as the dirt's already on the floor. They uh, just recently replaced the dirt in here, I do believe, and it seems to actually have a better uh, surface for this kind of racing. It's still got bite in it, but we're not seeing guys want to hike up and roll over. Very used to this soil being very tacky and kind of jumping up and catching these guys by surprise. It doesn't seem to be happening as uh, Corey Snyder comes into stage against Aaron Basil. Snyder has been on rails all night. The only guy who got close to him so far was Stevie Snellen. Let's see what he has here against Aaron Basil. Both of them very quick off the light. A lead to Basil out of the first turn into the final second. Wow! They both pushed it to the end. Snyder having to put his foot in it, give it all it had, and it will work out in his favor. Corey Snyder in Toxic picks up the racing victory here on night number one in DeCoin, Illinois. Basil gave him all he wanted in that round. Let's watch it again. Basil actually had a little bit better lead, but I do believe Snyder trying to push that truck as hard as it would go. I think the open front end in this case actually helped Basil just a little bit in that first turn. In fact, he got through the final corner a little quicker than Snyder, but when Snyder put his foot in the power, it was uh, all over Basil, though, making it very close at the end. I should say Snyder made it close at the end because that one almost belonged to the Devastator. As our pro rough trucks come back to the line right now. Best of uh, two times. We'll take the victory right now as Jason Bono comes back out. Ran a, a 39.05 in the first round. Trying to better a 36.64. Laid down by a striker in Cody Coulter. Trying to slide it through that car. Look at this, took a different route going around the outside. Trying to set himself up a little better for that jump. Nicely done, he clears it. Solid run for Jason. Let's see, 40.01 seconds for the General Lee. Not gonna be enough, his uh, first round time will stand. We get ready for our next machine to come out. It's Evan Collins driving Bono's other vehicle, Plum Nuts. Remember, Collins ran a uh, 48.56 in the first round, and that, I believe, was with a penalty as he missed one jump completely, actually drove around the uh, race lane ramp right uh, nearest to this camera that you're looking at right now. Let's see what this big purple bulldoze Bronco has. Still struggling a bit with it. Looking a lot better than he did in that first round. Let's see if he goes up the ramp this time. And a problem right there, it falls on its face, but that doesn't stop him, he gets back underway, gets a little air under the Bronco. Final corner. Trying to better his own time of a 48.56 right now, and he will do it. Not gonna get him in the top spot by a long shot, a 45.43 for Collins, but uh, he was just trying to better himself after the struggle that he had in round one as uh, our next competitor gets ready to come out. 
Cody Coulter and Stryker, who's leading the charge right now with a 36-64, and he's uh, pretty secure in that. There's one guy that's going to be able to get past him as uh, Coulter just tries to make it that much harder on Mike Mazzi, who will run at the end of this four-truck field and the little love truck slightly modified out of Brazito, Missouri. Let's see what the Jeff City Explorers got. So smooth through that first leg. Let's see. Hammer in the rear end when he came over that one. He cleared that by a mile. Let's see what he's got here. Coming in this final section. What a run for Stryker. He took no chances on letting Mozzie get by him, and that's going to make things harder on Mike. A 36-47. Remember, he ran a 36-64 in the first round. Now, slightly modified. A little love truck from the Show Me State with the dual rears. See if he can better a 36-47. This is a quick run he's got going. He is in the hunt right now. He's close. Beautiful final quarter. As he slides to a stop, what was the time? 36.65. One hundredth of a second off the top time from round one, and uh, he'll fall short of Cody Coulter in striker. So there you see your winner out of the Pro Rough Trucks will be Cody Coulter in striker. Then it's Mike Mozzie in slightly modified, Jason Bono and Evan Collins rounding out the field freestyle with our monster trucks coming up next when we come back to DeCoin, Illinois. Hey, welcome to Wild Man Adventures. For the Silver Lake Sand Dragway, there really wasn't any off-roading back then. It was all off-roading. We're on our way to Lima, Ohio. Got wooden wheels. Oh, it's slippery. It's all good, Alex. Hey, we're here with Rich Cummins. Hey, we're here with Mike Potter. Hey, we're here with Alan Pizzo. We're gonna check it out. This week, we're gonna go down memory lane. We are back at the Southern Illinois Center in Des Moines, Illinois, getting ready for Monster Truck Freestyle. It's 
All five of our vehicles will get the chance to hit the course. They can hit whatever they want out here. You can see there's plenty of obstacles for them to go after. This will be their first chance to take on some of these uh, center mounds. And first up will be Jim Burns out of Rockford, Illinois, driving the Louisville, Kentucky-based Alcatraz. The Bluegrass Bulldog getting set for another new driver to take it down the track. That same new driver, again, Burns used to own this chassis. Never got it finished. Derek Anson purchased it, kind of refat some things on it, made it his own, and now it's serving as uh, just a work of art. A little bit of high center of gravity here in Burns. Definitely does not want to be the guy who puts that thing on his top. As uh, you saw in our highlights from Madison at the top of the show, Stevie Snellen almost already did that. Getting after it a little bit right there. Burns just trying to warm up to this machine. He's been out of the seat for uh, a few years now. And uh, again, in a truck that he's never driven before, in a setup that he's never driven, just trying to get the feel for it as he will set the early pace. This uh, competition is judged on crowd applause. Our next vehicle and the teammate. To Alcatraz now ready to roll out and the man who drove Alcatraz last time out in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. This is heavy hitter. Again, low center of gravity can really sling this thing around. And he does so right there, those uh, Ukraines digging up some soil. This hard packed dirt here in the uh, Illinois, the Southern Illinois center. Nice launch right there is a kicker ramp on the other side of that uh, stoppy pad over there. Like that, and he went after it again. And Snellen will bring it to a stop. Raising the bar a little bit here for this awesome crowd. Here in DeCoin as he again ripped up some of that hard packed soil. Down the center of the uh, DeCoin State Fair Southern Illinois Center. And now the War Wizard, R.J. Turner. Glad to be back on dirt this weekend, I can tell you that. Opens it up with a stoppy into a moonwalk. This is a guy who's always in his shocks trying to find the perfect setup and he's never quite happy with him. It's not because the truck doesn't work as you can see right there. A little slappily on all that hang time.
raising that bar, and he's got to be happy that things breaking loose. This is something that uh, he's had uh, trouble with over the years. He's been upside down more than once on this tour. Nicely done right there, wheeling off the pad. Slinging dirt all over the Southern Illinois Center War Wizard. Picking up the pace. And I do believe grabbing the favor of this crowd here in DeCoin. Get ready for our uh, next machine to come out, which will be Corey Snyder. Here's another look at that stopping. Nice controlled move into a moonwalk right back up and over that ramp. And following it up with uh, some really nice uh, air shots. There, a little hang time into a small slap wheel as he started to run out of room now on the top end of the building. And he knew he'd have to lay down a shot to stay out in front of this guy, Corey Snyder. Another old liner in Toxic 2.0. Big Ford bodied machine out of Frederick, Maryland with a truck out of Gaithersburg, Maryland. The driver calling Frederick, Maryland home. And uh, interestingly enough, War Wizard and Toxic have uh, kind of twin motors in this weekend, a pair of Oldsmobile powered machines. The uh, sister engine to the one that Kevin Stauffer built for War Wizard is in the back of Toxic 2.0. run. Probably the best momentum we have seen so far. There it is, plowing up some soil with the wheelie bar. Through the tough trucks, whoop section, and that's actually really hard on you as a driver because the shocks don't have a chance to drop out. These trucks like big hang time. Snyder definitely gave him plenty of that. An awesome slap wheelie in there. As I said, I knew he would try to grab him before the end of the run. Some uh, great momentum in that run, if nothing else, but some solid moves in there as well as he goes after R.J. Turner and War Wizard. Unfortunately, Devastator will not freestyle as uh, Basil had some damage. So Corey Snyder with the sweep 
Here tonight in Des Moines, his first time on the Monsters of Destruction Tour. He takes a racing and a freestyle victory out of Des Moines, Illinois. It's been an awesome night. We have two more shows left to go here in the Southern Illinois Center. We will see you from show number two next time.